So, um, hi everyone. Um, today, um, I'll talk about plant functional diversity on an oceanic island and how it varies across spatial scales. So, um, it is known that biodiversity is scale dependent because the processes that shape it vary uh, across space, so from local to regional scapes. The spatial grain also influences diversity estimations, for instance, measuring uh, diversity with big plots versus doing it at a small plot might lead to different uh, diversity estimations. So here in the right side, I'm showing you two hypothetical scenarios of diversity patterns over space. So on the top, I have diversity measured at a, at a large grain and on the bottom at a small grain. These diversity values are uh, different uh, for, uh, the same, for the two forests that are evaluated. So at the large um, grain, forest A has higher values of diversity than forest B. And here we see opposite uh, trends. So B has higher values than A. Um, now, there is a relative good understanding of um, diversity patterns across space for taxonomic diversity but not so well for functional diversity. And so these limits are understanding about the effect of scale on functional diversity and particularly for oceanic islands because uh, traits uh, estimations are limited for this type of systems. So based on this, I set two research questions. So I wanted to know first, what is the effect of the spatial grain on functional diversity and then what if uh, the patterns of functional and taxonomic diversity are similar over, um, over space? To answer these uh, research questions, I use Tenerife Island as a model system. I defined um, the regional scale as the Tenerife vegetation types. Those are areas with distinct climatic conditions, so warm and dry areas on the coast, warm and wet areas at the intermediate elevations, and uh, cold and dry areas at the high elevations. I calculated functional diversity at two local grains, so one square kilometer, and the other at 100 uh, square meters. So for this, I use eight plant functional traits, which I collected and measured uh, for nearly all Tenerife native plants. And uh, for the functional diversity measures, I use uh, new approach uh, by Chao et al, which uses uh, sensitive um, functional diversity measures based on species pairwise distances that uses uh, based on the traits. Um, so what I found is that functional diversity is scale dependent. So here um, in these two figures, we can see that the patterns uh, uh, vary. So on the left, I have the functional diversity patterns for the local grain and here for the large grain. And um, the patterns are different. If we look um, at, the, at the different vegetation types, which are, are represented on the different colors of the lines. So here for, for the large grain, the laurel forest, which is in the green, has the highest values of functional diversity, while at a smaller scale, the coastal scrub has highest values for functional diversity. We can see that at both grains, here in the red lines, which is the summit scrub, uh, vegetation types located at the high elevations has the lowest functional diversity. Now, if we only look at the large local grain patterns, um, we, I see that these differences among the vegetation types uh, might relate to the resource availability of each uh, type. So for instance, a lower forest, is an area with high amount of rainfall and mild temperatures. This might be boosting functional diversity, while the summit crop is a dry area with low temperatures. This might be uh, strongly filtering uh, functional diversity. And so lastly, I found for my second research question that uh, the patterns of functional diversity and taxonomic diversity across space are different. And we can see that here on the top are the patterns of functional diversity, which are uh, saturating way faster than the patterns of taxonomic diversity across space. So on the X axis, I have basically area. And what this suggests uh, in basically is that uh, even though the number of species uh, might increase over time, 
uh, the number of functional distinct species at some point will saturate, so will not in keep increasing. As a take home message, first, the spatial grain affects uh, estimations of functional diversity. Uh, the differences that I observe uh, of functional diversity across the vegetation types might, might be related to the resource available for plants on each uh, type and also the climatic conditions of each vegetation type or, for instance, an ecosystem that could apply. And finally, functional taxonomic diversity have different trends across spatial scale. So thank you very much. That's all from my side. Thank you very much. Really interesting. Uh, so again, we're going to wait uh, on questions to appear uh, while people are typing. Uh, I can ask one. Did you, so you measured like, I don't remember, several uh, traits at the start you, you were mentioning. Exactly. Uh, do you know, did you, did you had a look or do you know if there is any impact of the traits you're measuring? So for example, if you drop one trait, do these patterns change a lot? Well, I use um, um, I use six traits, and most of them are um, quite orthogonal to each other. So I think yes, if uh, if you drop a trait that is quite orthogonal or is driving a lot of variation, then of course the the pattern would change. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's the answer. Um, but it depends on which trait. Uh, like I have several leaf traits. I measure. Um, six, uh, no, like five. So it depends. If I drop, for instance, seed mass, it will have a stronger impact what, than dropping leaf area if I have leaf dry matter content or leaf thickness. It depends on the trade um, that we decide to drop. <laughs> yeah. Cool, really cool uh, work anyway. Uh, must have been a lot of work for collecting all this data. Uh, have a look in Slack. There is some extra questions that are appearing. Uh, and thank you again very much for your presentation. You. Uh, so we're going to have... Oops.